This is my third tutorial and is similar to my first one in that I show how I use geometry nodes to extrude and then scale faces of a platonic solid out to form the arms on which the end of are instanced smaller versions of the original solid. This process is then repeated for the new instances thus forming a kind of 3D snowflake. The first tutorial just extruded at the arms a second time a little bit forming squares which were then used as the next instances and not a scaled down version of the original platonic solid. Then adding subdivision surface and smooth nodes, I can create these kind of shapes. There are two reasons for the delay in this tutorial. The first is I couldn't figure out how to align the rotations of the instances to the ends of the arms. Many thanks to Marcus von Brody, who via Stack Exchange showed me how to achieve this. The second problem is also an alignment problem about placing the instance at the correct distance so that it sits on the end of the arm, but I have a rather clunky solution to this. I have enabled screencast keys so that you can see which mouse buttons and keyboard keys I am using. Create a platonic solid. You need to enable the extra objects add-on. And then you can create by add mesh math function regular solid and then change the type via the source in the operator panel. For the dodecahedron you need to delete the line that split all the faces. So in edit mode select one of these lines, select similar length and dissolve them. Then in object mode, duplicate it, not a linked duplicate, and rotate the copy so that it has a bottom face that is flat in the Z axis, which is already the case for the tetrahedron and the hexahedron cube. But for the other three regular solids, you can simply rotate them. But don't forget to apply the rotation transforms. Now edit the copy, and delete just the bottom face. This is where it is joined to the extruded arm and we don't want an internal face. Back in object mode you can now hide this copied object. Now with the original object selected add the geometry nodes modifier and click new. Add an extrude mesh node to the green geometry link. This forms the arms on which the next iteration are grown. Sometimes when I select an object, nothing is shown in the geometry nodes editor. This especially happens when jumping in and out of group editing. Simply press A to select all nodes and then numpad dot to frame them all in view. Add a scale elements node to the geometry link after the extrudes mesh node. Ensure domain is face. Connect the extrudes top output to the scales selection input. This ensures only the end of the extruded arm is scaled. Add a delete geometry node after the scale elements node. Also connect the extrudes node top output to the delete selection input and change the domain to face. This deletes the face at the end of the arm. Now add a mesh to points node. Connecting its mesh input to the extrudes mesh output and its selection input to the extrudes top output and set its mode to faces. Add an instances on point connecting the points input and outputs to the previous added node. Add a scale elements node
and connects its geometry output to the instance on point node input, nothing inputted yet. These last three nodes will create the scale down mesh at the end of the arms. Add a Realize Instances node. Connecting its geometry input to the instances on point nodes instances output. Add a join geometry node on the geometry link to the group output. which takes its inputs from the original geometry and the realizer's instances. Select these eight nodes and create a group. Create a new group input for the extrude mesh input. And call it extrude mesh. Create a new group input for the geometry input of the second scale node called instance geometry. Exit the group. And clicking this pin locks the Geometry Nodes editor to the original mesh. And then we can select the second copied mesh and drag it into the Geometry Nodes editor. You can do this without using the lock pin if you're quick enough. I recommend you unclick this pin as later when working on many meshes. With Geometry Nodes it is surprisingly easy to start editing the wrong Geometry Nodes for a selected mesh. Connect the Geometry Output of the new Object Info node to the group node instance geometry input and connect original geometry to the extrude mesh input. Edit the group node and for the second scale elements node connect its scale input as a new group input. Leave the name as scale and connect its geometry output as another group output called instance geometry. Create a group input for the offset scale input of the extrude mesh, leave its name as offset scale. Connect the group input scale to the scale input of the first scale elements node. Create a group output called extrude geometry for the geometry output of the realize instance node. Duplicate the group input node and add a math node set to multiply and connect its inputs to the group input nodes offset scale and scale. Create another group output called offset scale for the maths node value output. Create another group output for the group input node scale output, leave name as scale. You can hide the unused group inputs for the second group input node by toggle hidden node socket. Of course you can do this for all the other nodes if you want. Exit the group, set offset scale to 4 and scale to 0.35. As you can see the instances meshes are not correctly aligned which was my first problem described at the start. 
Change viewport shading to wire but not x-ray to see this more clearly. To correctly align the instanced mesh we need to use Marcus's suggested nodes. So edit in the group Add a capture attribute Set data type to vector and domain to face whose geometry input is the extrude mesh's output and whose value is A for my normal node. Add a sample nearest node Set the domain to edge whose geometry is connected to the captures geometry Nothing connected to sample position input Add a sample index node Set data type to vector and domain to edge. Connect its geometry input to capture attributes geometry output, value input to a position node, and index input to the sample nearest indexed output. Duplicate the capture attribute node, also set to vector and phase, connecting their geometries and value input to sample index node value output connect geometry output to mesh to points mesh input add an align euler to vector node connecting its vector input to first capture attributes attribute output Add a vector math node set to subtract whose first vector input is a position node and second vector input is the second capture attribute node attribute output. Duplicate the align Euler and vector node again. Don't change the axes or pivot yet. Connect its rotation input to the previous align Euler vector node's rotation output and its vector input to the vector math node's vector output. Connect its rotation output to the rotation input on the instance on points node. Now in the 3D viewport you can still see the instance mesh are not aligned correctly but set the second align Euler vector nodes pivot to Z leaving the first one as auto. Now I'm afraid the align axes are not the same for the different platonic solids especially if you use your own meshes but there are only nine combinations and the correct one is obvious if you just go through them and this only needs doing once. The second problem is the offset error that is different for each iteration. I've tried putting the origin of the instanced geometry in the middle of the deleted phase, but all to no avail. I suspect it's something to do with the different order of the vertices together with the Euler rotations that cause this. Anyway, my fun and um, clunky solution is to add a combine XYZ node whose Z input is another group input called offset. Add a transform node
to the geometry input link to the second scale elements node, whose translation input is the combined XYZ vector output. Add a merge by distance node to the geometry output of the join geometry node. Leave mode set to all. Duplicate the group input node and connect the distance input of the merge by distance node as a new group input. Called merge distance. Exit the group. Set the group input merge distance to zero and then you can use a mouse to click and drag and change the position of the instance meshes. Hold the shift key to give finer movement. But on later iterations it is easier to enter these values manually as the distances get quite small. When sufficiently close, increase the merge distance to close the gap. At this point I realise I should have called the group output extrude geometry. It should have been called extrude mesh with capital M to match the input. Now duplicate the group node and with the two group nodes selected press F to join the remaining four corresponding inputs and outputs even if the order is different, as long as other names match. Again, set the merge distance to zero, then tweak the offset, then merge distance to correct the meshes correctly. Finally, I added a subdivision surface of level 2. And set shade smooth nodes. Be aware that four iterations of the icosahedron, which has the most faces at 20, crashed my blender when I enabled the subdivision surface modifier. But without this you can probably go further, but I like the nice shiny smooth surfaces. So I only had three iterations for the icosahedron, but four for all the others. I hope I haven't made any mistakes, but here are the tidied up nodes. Some of the names and orders were a little bit different to the preceding tutorial, but hopefully you will be able to figure it out. Of course, any materials need to be added to both the original mesh using the geometry nodes and also the hidden mesh used for instancing. I apologise for the clunky method of manually setting the distance, but if anyone can show me how to calculate this, I would be grateful, as I will be for any constructive criticism, and I hope some of this is interesting or useful. I also apologise for my voice, but I have a cold.